Hello guys, uh, welcome to another session of Elimu Glass. In this video series, we will go through the whole calculus course. This is whether you are taking uh, mathematics at, uh, at uh, SL or at HL. My name is Solomon Saduma. If you are new to Elimika, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so that you are notified uh, whenever we make a new uh, video lesson. Uh, uh, as a student, I was very lucky to have been taught by some of uh, the very brilliant mathematics teachers, uh, but even those teachers tended to assume so much when it came to calculus. Uh, many students usually find this course difficult, uh, and I'm here to tell you that uh, it should not be as difficult as it sounds. You are in the right room, and uh, we will see shortly why this is in fact uh, supposed to be one of the easiest courses uh, uh, for students taking the diploma program. Uh, if you are a higher level student, we will uh, go deeper uh, uh, into trying to comprehend uh, calculus, specifically uh, when it comes to differentiation, we want to understand uh, the principles of uh, differentiation, such as the first principle, uh, the paper three will usually go slightly deeper to try and make you understand these basic principles that underlie uh, uh, calculus, all right? Um, and uh, let us begin. Uh, the first thing I want us to do is to just quickly go through some of the prior knowledge, some of the areas you should know uh, before you embark on this course. Uh, essentially, and the most important is uh, understanding of coordinate geometry. Um, what do we mean here? Being able to calculate the gradient of a straight line should be relatively fine for those who've gone through mathematics in uh, secondary school. Uh, if you are given uh, a straight line with two known coordinate points, then it should be possible for us to find the gradient of the line. So suppose we are given a point A with coordinates x1, y1, and a point B with coordinates x2, y2 then we can, uh, with the knowledge of the x values and the y values, uh, if we know the change in x direction and we know the change in the y direction, so that's the change in y, and we know the change in x when we move from point A to point B, then the slope of that line, or so-called the gradient of the line, can be found by uh, the symbol we use in the IB diploma is M for gradient. In the Swedish curriculum, we use K for constant, all right? So the gradient or the slope M is given by the change in Y over the change in X, which is expressed as delta Y over delta X like that. So we should all be able to do this if we are going to tackle calculus uh, sufficiently. So this is basic idea that we all know, but it is fundamental to understanding uh, uh, calculus. Uh, specifically the first part of calculus, which is differentiation. All right, uh, the second thing you need to remember uh, is the gradient or the slope for parallel lines and for perpendicular lines. There is something we know about two lines that are parallel. If two lines are parallel, then their gradients are equal, and if the two lines are perpendicular, then the gradients are such that their product is negative one. Uh, I've written this down, so if two lines are parallel, and one has a gradient m1 with the other gradient m2, then the gradients will be the same. If the two lines are perpendicular, with one line having a gradient m1 and the other gradient m2, then the product of their gradient will always be negative one. Another thing that we, another way to say this is that the gradient of one of the lines, so m1, will be the same as the negative reciprocal of the second line, okay, the gradient of the second line, okay? So this is a relationship for the gradient of lines that are perpendicular. All right, we'll move on. So this is the standard or the basic area of understanding that we all need to remember before we embark on uh, differentiation or basically before we get into calculus, okay? Uh, the next point, the next item or area that you need to understand is how to calculate the limit of a function, okay? For example, here is a function, this is a rational function, and we might be asked to find the limit of this function as the value of x is made larger and larger. So what happens to the value of f of x as we make x 
this value of x bigger and bigger and bigger. That means we make x approach infinity. So, for example, if we make x 10, then this becomes 21 over 8. If we make x at 100, that becomes 201 over 98, and so on. What happens as the value of x approaches millions and millions and so on? And uh, the, the way to find this is, so uh, just uh, what we've written there, what value does the uh, f of x approach as x approaches infinity? One of the ways to do this is to divide the numerator and denominator by x. Okay, so we take the numerator, divide by x, we go to the denominator and divide by x, and if we do that, we will get, so the numerator there becomes uh, 2x, I'll write next to it, so 2x over x uh, plus 1 over x, and the denominator becomes uh, x over x plus, uh, minus 2 over x, well, 2x uh, over x is just 2, so we'll have 2, 1 over x, and the denominator will be 1 minus 2 over x, and so now the important part that you need to remember is that, um, sorry, let me remove what I've just written, you can see that we're going to have uh, 1 is a reciprocal function, that's a reciprocal function, and that's also a reciprocal function. So what happens to the value of 1 over x as x is becoming larger and larger? We should be able to notice, we've talked about this before, that as the denominator becomes bigger and bigger, 1 over a large number tends to 0. Okay, similarly, this tends to 0, and we'll end up having 2 divided by 1, and so we can say that the limit of the function is actually going to be 2. Let's just uh, see how we've written that down. Okay, uh, and so if we divide, that's what we get, and now we ask ourselves, what the li what's the limit of 1 over x? as the value of x is becoming bigger and bigger, put that as 1 million. 1 divided by a million is a very, very tiny number, which will be approaching 0 as that number gets even bigger. And the same goes for that. And so we can say that the limit of 1 over x as x tends to infinity is 0, and the same as that. And for that reason, the limit of the function f of x will be approaching 2 divided by 1, which is going to be 2. So these are ideas about determining the limit of a function. We will look at how to find the limit of other function using what we call uh, L'Hopital's rule, but that will come later once we've understood, uh, we have a clearer understanding of uh, differentiation, okay? And therefore, we write that the limit as x tends to infinity of the function f of x is 2, all right? So, Ideas revolving around determining limits uh, is one of the other areas you need to be familiar with. Uh, it helps to be familiar with this to understand the basic principles underlying differentiation. Okay, uh, uh, We should be able to graph f of x if you are given a function like that. So this is another way of seeing this limit. All right, so if you look at this function, you can you notice that the value as, as the value of x becomes bigger, 0, 5, 10, 15, and so on, the value of y, the value of the function, drops down and levels off around 2, which is telling us that the function y, f of x, will be approaching 2 as the value of x gets bigger and bigger. It never really arrives at 2, but it will be approaching that value of 2 as x tends to infinity, positive infinity. You should also notice that, on the other hand, as x tends to negative infinity, so negative uh, 0, negative 5, negative 10, and so on, on the other side, the graph is climbing, but again leveling off towards uh, 2. So, in fact, we know from our understanding of rational functions that the horizontal asymptote of this function is actually uh, y equals to 2, which is also the definition of a horizontal asymptote, okay? The value uh, that the function attains as x tends to infinity, okay? So we can draw that dotted line there, and it is the line y equals to 2. We say the function approaches line y equals to 2 
as x tends to infinity, both ways positive and negative. Okay, so that's that. Uh, the third thing I need you to remember is, uh, very briefly, this is not uh, very crucial, especially to the SL students. If you are in HL, this becomes crucial as well, especially when we are looking at, uh, 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 we want to find the derivatives or we want to differentiate functions that are a, a little bit more complex, all right? Then we will uh, need to have our knowledge, our skills of expanding certain types of function. It becomes helpful. Uh, what particularly do we want you to know? Uh, for a standard level student, you should be able to expand, binomially expand a function, uh, an expression, uh, where n is an integer. So for example, if we were given, uh, if we were told to expand uh, x plus y to the power of 8, then we should know how to expand this. We know that this is going to contain 8 plus 1 term, so when we have fully expanded this, there will be 9 terms. We should be able to find any of these terms, uh, the first term being 8 combination 0, then we say x power 8 minus 0, okay, put that in bracket, then we say y to the power of 0, we say plus 8 combination 1, x power 8 minus 1, y power 1, and so on. So if we know how to do this, that is going to be useful. Uh, HL students, if a function is given as 1 plus x, or 2x, or whatever, and this is power n, then we also know that we can expand this. Uh, the expansion becomes 1 plus nx plus n into n minus 1 over 2 factorial x squared plus n n minus 1, n minus 2, over 3 factorial, x cubed, and we can go on to infinity. It doesn't really matter how far we, uh, usually we'll be asked to do about 3 terms or 4 terms, but it never really gets beyond that. Being able to do this expansion, determine any of the terms that are uh, required of us, becomes useful, uh, especially when we have to differentiate from first principle, and especially when we are dealing with certain difficult function, where n here could be a negative number, it could also be a fraction, like a half, or two-thirds, or a third, like that. Mm? So this is important. Uh, the second one is very important, especially for the HL students. Right? Uh, next thing that becomes useful. Now, most of this is, uh, you know, just a basic understanding is enough. So an SL student or an HL student should not be worried that they will not understand uh, calculus without all of this. It's not a must that you know all of it, but having a general idea of what this is about is helpful. So for an SL student, uh, you should be able to expand binomially where n is an integer. We are talking 2, 3, 4. Uh, power 1 does not make any difference. So for large values uh, starting from 2, we should be able to expand or we should be able to find any given term. Okay? For an HL student, the value of n can be any integer, positive or negative, but it can also be a rational number. Uh, such as a fraction like a half or a negative number, all that uh, negative fractional number, all that is, uh, is possible for HL students. Point number four of what you should know is some bits of geometry and trigonometry, particularly uh, in trigonometry, we want, to be, we, we want you to know the triangle rules. Please check uh, other videos in this channel uh, on chapter three, which are triangle rules. Um, so this is going to be important, cosine rule, sine rule, area of a triangle, that those points are going to be useful in uh, this topic uh, when it comes to application. Uh, you should also know about uh, how to find arc lengths, sectors, and segments. Uh, these become useful, all right? Uh, trigonometric identities, if you are an SL student, you just need to know up to the double angle formulae. 
if you are an HL student, we also expect you know, uh, to know the compound angle formulas. Uh, in addition to that, it helps if you know some, some of uh, the limits of uh, trigonometric uh, ratios. Uh, if you know, for example, that the limit as x tends to uh, 0 of sine x over x, that is equal to 1. The limit of 1 minus cosine or cosine minus 1 over x uh, equals 0. And the limit of tan x over x equals 1. If you know this, it becomes helpful, but it's not a must. We will talk about this again. Uh, you will also find uh, the derivations of this under chapter, three, uh, under chapter 3 on trigonometry. In, that is uh, inside uh, uh, in the in the channel. Right. Uh, what else do we need to know? The last thing I think is exponential and logarithmic functions. Not not a big deal. Basically, just uh, laws of exponents and laws of logarithms uh, should be sufficient to enable you to manipulate uh, exponents easily. Um, uh, exponential and logarithmic functions, drawing the graphs of exponential functions and graphs of logarithmic function uh, can be helpful. All right. Yes. And so the first thing we will go into is going to be differentiation from first principle. So I'm going to stop this video here uh, so that, uh, you know, it, it does not take so long so that we will start the next lesson on a new uh, video. All right. Thank you very much. I hope uh, this makes sense and uh, meet you in the next lesson. Bye.